Good morning, everybody. Today's the 27th of July, 2020. Now, there's gonna be no action in this video. No security guards losing their rag. Me not calling anyone a bunch of fucking wankers or disgusting cunts. Little imps of Satan, little disgusting, obedient, demoralized orcs wearing the muzzle, the little fucking cunts, piece of shit. Right, now that I've let that out. Um, to kick us off, there's a big concept that was uh, massive within totalitarian regimes. Um, Yuri Brezhnev, the, he um, defected to the West in the 80s, and he talked a lot about the old Soviet and Stalinist and um, Khrushchevian uh, theory of demoralization, how you, how you get a country to surrender its testicles on a plate how it puts its ovaries on a plate. Sure, abort all my babies. Fuck the future. Fuck life. It doesn't matter. It's just a clump of cells. Who cares that it's my clump of cells and if I left it alone, it would turn into a symphony creating beautiful human being having loves and dreams and aspirations and kids of its own carrying on into the future. Ad, ad, ad infinitum. The way you fuck a society over is you demoralize it. Now, one of the most obvious ways to demoralize is to have arbitrary laws that make no sense, that you just have to follow. And uh, another thing that can demoralize you is when you have to repeat with your own mouth, with your own soul, with your own being, things that you know are not true. Now, very quick side note, on um, Twitter, you see a lot of tweets which are mantras. Sometimes it's written in capitals, sometimes in normal writing. But certain things like, Abortion rights are health rights. Abortion rights are health rights. Abortion rights are health rights. Or transsexual women are women. Transsexual women are women. Transsexual women are women. And it's that, and like, it reminds me of when you used to see on the news those like little Pakistani boys in the madrasas in Pakistan just reciting the Quran, just line after line after line. Oh. Now, they're not the only headbangers. There's a lot of religions at the Wailing Wall. They have a good wail at the wall. Um, every religion has its dogmas and bloody demoralizing statements of nonsense. And the reason I mentioned Twitter, Twitter is the most disgustingly mentally ill piece of shit platform I've ever seen in my life. Every time I log on to Twitter to have a look, it's like I get a migraine from the stupidity and it's encouraged. The little imp orcs, the little demon cunts follow this madness and you see them using likes and ratios and other blue ticks as a way to bully and intimidate and demoralize. So we've had the mandatory face mask, the obviously the virus face mask mandatory legislation in the UK. And it's not just here in the UK, it's everywhere. Uh, if you want to buy bread, put the muzzle on. If you want to buy milk, put the fucking muzzle on. So of course, as a contrarian, reactionary, freedom loving, human being, I have not worn the um, face mask, um, not once, and um, I think out of the seven times I've been to the supermarket, there's one guy, a bootlicking member of the public that I talked about in the last video, but in Asda yesterday morning, the guy at the door offered him a box of face masks, he goes, oh, very polite, and I said, no, 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 and he goes, okay, 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 and that, that was that, everywhere else, co-op, Tesco's, Oh, nobody can and wants to enforce this demoralizing thing. Now, it is, of course, it's a symbol of compliance. And that's all I want to say about it. But the bigger problems we're seeing in the world now, like, have you seen the disgusting footage of whatever her name is? Sarah, Jane, Mary, whatever her name is. The young leader of Black Lives Matter, Oxford University. Um... How, I mean, she's what, 18? She's what, maybe just finished puberty? She's uh, live action role playing. She's got the little beret. She's got the little black clothes, the chain, the, the angry look. Um, and here's the thing, like, I'm going to call her out, asshole. Um, I, you know, if she's at Oxford University, unless they've lowered the entry requirements massively, like, when she speaks, I think she's pretending to be common. I think she's quite posh and privileged and probably comes from a very respectable, very upper-class black family. 
but in it because she's like Black Lives Matter in it in it yeah like she actually called and I'll I'll try and remember to post the video but you've probably seen it it's all over the world she actually called a, a black gentleman a journalist a well dressed respectable man that was asking her about this she lost her rag she's a can I fucking sort you out mate and um, it was embarrassing. It was cringe. It was like, whoa, whoa, I need sunglasses to see the, the, the shininess of this cringe. And she, in front of all the cameras of the world, she goes, you're a coon to the black gentleman. And he's like, he's like, he did the kind of like, um, what? And um, she's like, yeah, well, I, I, I can't be racist towards you in it because like, I'm black too. And um, he's like, sorry to call you out, but you're over emotional, quick to anger. You're threatening to take me around the corner for a fight. It's proper chavvy behavior. Who are they letting in? But here's the thing, like, look, she's what, 18? Maybe she just got rid of her last nappy recently. She is obviously doing a live action role playing. It's great fun. It's like, yeah, revolution, one solution, revolution black fist in the air let's all dress like black panthers it's the 1960s and even the mod the neo black panthers they have the most pathetic name the nfac they call themselves the not fucking around coalition i'm sorry but if you call yourself the not fucking around coalition you're fucking around let's be clear here <sighs> the most important thing i've discovered about myself since having children i've got three children is that you realize how meaningless your your own life is um alongside an ideal an idea and i'll tell you it's a very simple idea i think a lot of dads have this exact idea and um the idea is i want the absolute best for my children and i will lay down my health my life my freedom my free time my leisure to ensure that my children have the best chance at life to become well-rounded, respectable, decent human beings who value the future, who value optimism, who believe that um, love and truth and beauty and aesthetics are values that mean something. They will fight nihilists and I will teach them uh, how to think, how to feel. Uh, this is not going to paraphrase that Charlie Chaplin. The machine men will tell you how to think and how to feel. But I want to teach my children how to actually think for themselves. So. The, the, what I'm trying to say is when you have something so important that is so precious that you would die for it, you would kill for it, of course, no, any healthy dad would, you know, when, when, if the music, if you had to face the music, you would. And I think a lot of, and again, let me just say here, hand on my heart, um, I have a lot of love for some very close friends of mine who have been unable to have children. And there's a variety of reasons people don't have kids, and it's very personal. And someone's personal choices as well is um, very close to their hearts. And so I love a lot of people in my per close personal life who haven't had kids. But I think when you get a mass amount of young people, and here's the thing, the way the... the um, the entropy of capitalism, and again, nothing against capital, I'm not going to get into that. The entropy of capitalism has eroded the ability of young people, you know, young middle classes, young working class, upper working classes, to buy their own house, to buy a car. I mean, we all know the boomers in the 60s and 70s were buying, you know, a nice three bedroom house with a garage, or as the Americans would say, a garage. Garage to put the missile, put the missile in your trunk, the aluminum missile in your trunk. In the garage? In the waste paper basket? Boomers could buy a house for like $5,000, £3,000. My dad used to drive around in a Lotus Europa sports car. You know, bought a house. Mortgage lasted, what, three minutes? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Payments are like 15 shillings a week. Whereas obviously now with the entropy of capitalism, you know, because banks lend mortgages, everything escalates. Oh, let's make more money. Let's overprice the house because then the mortgage is bigger. Banks get into the house building business because then they can inflate the prices. Oh, if you use our mortgage provider, you can get the mortgage. We'll give you preferential rates, a little bit more expensive, but you have a lower deposit because we already own the building. 
it's not so much corruption, it's just the natural entropy of capitalism. Anyway, middle class people can't afford kids. You gotta just take the fucking plunge. You gotta take the leap of faith. You gotta just have kids and do your best. That's how you do it. But people get worried. They're like, oh, I can't afford to have kids. Now, the working classes, people that are maybe less neurotically over-socialized, they're still having kids. They're still fertile as hell. They still manage to feed and house and do stuff for their kids. And let me just pause this for a second so I can collect my thoughts on what I'm about to say. So if you're of normal intelligence, or maybe just average, below average intelligence, you understand key concepts, you know, it's simple. Children, future, good, food, table, house, yeah. Whereas if you're very intelligent, overly intelligent, you you um, you realize, oh, oh my God, like, what's the point? But if you're just in the middle, that sweet spot, the sweet spot that all um, dictators love, IQs between 90 and 110, they become successful middle, middle managers, policemen, obedient people, like socialists. And again, let's not go into socialists, but that kind of over-socialized, I need to be concerned about the rights of people that have nothing to do with me, even though everyone's free, even though there's a black president for eight years. Oh, the racism, it's everywhere. Fucking racism, homophobia. Oh my God, they're not teaching little kids how to have gay sex. It's homophobia insanity. So the point of my channel, I've, I mentioned this recently, is a public service to just show you, and like I'm a bit more vocal than most, clearly here I am being vocal, that you don't need to comply, you don't need to be demoralized, you don't need to auto-sterilize yourself worried about kids, just have kids if you can, you know, obviously with respect to people who couldn't. Let me just let something out of the bag here. It Sometimes it, it, it does fucking blow my mind that you get well-off people who haven't had kids or couldn't have kids, yet they don't adopt. They don't foster. Like, I promise you, if you're well-off and feeling a bit nihilistic and a bit existential, if you give... 15 years or 18 years or even a few years to a foster child and give them some decency and structure the universe will repay you big time now this takes me on nicely to um you know personal problems that we all have i you know like when you meet someone new and i don't meet a lot of new people like i've met a few people recently, a Kyrian, you know, the part-time cameraman, uh, we've been hanging out a couple of times, and luckily this wasn't the case, I like the guy a lot, now, but you know what, sometimes you meet people, and they start telling you really personal stuff that you'd expect to maybe hear from them, like a year into your friendship, or two years into the friendship, and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Jesus Christ, we've just met, I don't want to get pregnant with this fucking conversational foreplay that you're you're giving me here now i promise you and like this is exactly the case for myself and everyone else and you know i'm going to be 40 in a week it's been a running theme on my channel 40 in a week i promise you every single person that you admire that you think is confident or rich or good looking or amazing or powerful trust me they have the exact same existential problems you do. Don't think that if you take away the rent problem or the money problem that you're like, oh, I am literally in heaven. St. Peter has opened the gates and it's fluffy clouds and permanent orgasms and party. No, it, it's not. It's not. So what I'm trying to say is I have my own really heavy personal stuff to carry. And everyone has to carry this. This is part of the challenge of life is extremely difficult. So there's certain things I don't share on YouTube because it's disrespectful. It's also a bit a bit blurty. So let's just keep it at that. I think it's important to know. To paraphrase a Charles Bukowski quote, everyone's suffering, everyone's slowly dying, everyone's health is falling apart. You'd think knowing this, we'd be a little bit gentler and kinder to each other. But instead, we fight, we argue, we point guns at each other. We kill kids and we do stupid fucking shit, which comes from nihilism. You know, Nietzsche said, you know, God is dead. 
And again, you need to remember, you don't need to believe in dogma or you don't need to believe zombies walk the earth. You don't need to believe. But the idea of an all-loving, all-powerful, all-knowing deity that gave man free will to choose and do good so that we can one day elevate. Go read Andy Weir's The Egg. Go watch Krugerskakts in a nutshell channel. He did an amazing animation about Andy Weir's The Egg. Andy Weir wrote The Martian and a few other things. You know, the Matt Damon movie. Great movie. I enjoyed The Martian. I did. I like that sort of fucking solitary man castaway, Tom Hanksy castaway, but on a fucking planet Mars. It's cool. But Andy Weir The Egg. It's an escalating, fractal, infinite thing that you're working towards. So maybe one day you'll be gods too. Anyway, let's end this with um, just telling you that this episode is brought to you by The Veach Connection. You know my partners at Blackbeard Hosting over in Ireland. Oh my God, I didn't realize they had that many resources. It was that powerful. It was that amazing. It was that undercutting of the competition. And what really impressed me, speaking to one of their um, top sales managers there, is um, they said, Charlie come on board. What we believe in is um, making good money for ourselves and our family without ripping anyone off. And they can do that. You lower your profit margins. You, you aim to get more people on board. Bang. Fantastic. And geez, if you knew about the profit margins and some of the things out there. But anyway, have a look at the web hosting packages. Have a look at the domain names. They have a really powerful website builder. Super easy. Custom logo. It's all HTML5. Drag and drop. They know more about it than I do. I'm just your humble web services, web hosting, web development, domain name, website building, which is free. It's all free once you buy one of the packages. It's all in there. And what I like about Blackbeard hosting, you know, obviously Blackbeard comes from the pirate, you know, the bloody Caribbean 1700s. Arr, sailor. So there's an ethos there, an ethos like the pirate party in Norway or Denmark or Sweden, wherever it was. So... Again, because it's not the world's biggest company, you got problems. Obviously, I, I can't deal with the tech stuff, but you send an email in and the actual people that run it will contact you and take care of it. So have a look in the links below. Have a look at the descriptions. Have a look at the website builder. Have a look at some of the videos. It's amazing. And every time, because I'm now officially in, the Veach connection is my offshoot of Blackbeard hosting. So because I'm in, you can still use the codes I've been posting for the other stuff. It still comes back to me. But have a look around get on the Veach connection. This is the beginning. You know, you have to control the means of display. You know, when you're going to get banned by Twitter, Facebook, all these mentally ill piece of shit and platforms, I've created my own platform. There's now over 200 registered users using the site every day. And it's like, <laughs> squidgy your third eye clean and jump on board. They can't ban me. They can't stop me. They can't regulate what I say. It's like the future that was taken from us. So I'm going to control the means of internet. That's done. That's the Veach connection. We're going to have the Veach vigilance where I'm going to run a private type of, um, you know, kind of private investigation thing based on my ethos. And there's the Veach view where I talk about things that I believe in. And there's going to be all sorts of other Veach branded things. But for now, it's not the French connection. It's the Veach connection. Have a look below. I think you'll like what we've, we've got to offer. And again, the main selling point is price, high quality of unlimited, super fast resources, and customer service. So it's not like stay on hold for 10 minutes. No, you, you get in there, you get to speak to the guy, you get to speak to your high-powered internet technician, and it's sorted out for you. And it's all through me. So again, thank you very much for watching. It's goodbye from me. And because I've been doing a lot of sweary words, it's good that it's also goodbye from Sleeping Isaac. Thanks very much for watching.